Jennifer Hills, a young writer who rented a country house to write a new book in complete solitude, taking the keys and getting a map from Earl, the girl headed for the dwelling. But she soon realized she was lost. Stopping in a gas station, Jennifer met three guys, Johnny, Andy, and Stanley. One of the gas station attendants pointed the girl the right way and decided to show sympathy by flirting a little with the beauty. The attempt failed because Jennifer was very embarrassed and trying to get back into the car, accidentally knocked over a bucket of water. Friends laughed at the clumsy friend who wet not only his feet, but also his pants. Upon arrival at the country house, Jennifer settles in and begins to write a book. During the vacation, the girl sunbathes on the shore of the lake and allows herself a glass of wine to relax well. At some point, she hears strange sounds but realizes that it is a bird. In the evening, Jennifer chats with a friend and shares her first impressions of living outdoors, away from the city. Hearing a strange sound, the girl goes to the barn and finds nothing suspicious. Accidentally knocking over a glass of wine, the writer goes into the house and puts herself in order, not suspecting that someone is peeking at her and filming the girl on camera. The next morning, Jennifer goes for a run and finds an old abandoned house in the woods. Upon returning home, the girl wanted to tidy up, but due to sewage problems, she was unable to do so. The writer called a handyman and realized that by accident she had drowned her phone in the toilet. Attempts to dry it with a hair dryer were unsuccessful, and Jennifer was left incommunicado. Matthew, a retarded guy, fixed the toilet, making the girl happy. In gratitude, the girl kisses the plumber, but he is greatly embarrassed and runs away without taking money for the call. Meeting with three friends, Matthew tells them what happened, and Stanley shows them the video from the previous night. The friends banter with Johnny, as even Matthew got a kiss from the town hottie, and the gas station attendant becomes a humiliated laughingstock. Feeling insulted, Johnny decides to assert himself and take revenge on the girl. In the evening, Jennifer wanted to relax a little and smoke. Waking up in the middle of the night, the girl heard strange sounds and went outside to look around. She found a dead bird on the porch and noticed an open door in the barn. A few minutes later, Jennifer returned to the house and saw a picture on her laptop of the criminals breaking into her house. The men insult and humiliate the girl, forcing her to drink vodka. Then Johnny forces her to take the barrel of a revolver in her mouth, making different movements. At one point, the girl manages to grab the bottle and hit Andy with it. Grabbing the pepper spray, she disarms Stanley and manages to escape. In the woods, the girl met the local sheriff, Storg, and his buddy Earl. The landlord went home, and the policeman decided to walk Jennifer to her house. Arriving on the scene, the policeman examines the dwelling and finds nothing suspicious. An empty vodka bottle and weed indicate that Jennifer made it all up as a result of alcohol and drug intoxication. The sheriff decides to search the girl, and while doing so, he starts hitting on her. A few minutes later, Johnny and company return to the house. It turned out that the sheriff was not going to search for the criminals, as he was in cahoots with them. The man turned out to be more cruel and began to abuse Jennifer, threatening her with the shotgun. The writer was able to hit the sheriff, but it didn't help her, but only made the criminals angry. Johnny and Storg force Matthew to take the girl by force, otherwise they will take her out. A mentally challenged guy does division by zero with Jennifer. The beaten and humiliated girl leaves the house, but the men continue to pursue her. After catching Jennifer in the woods, the criminals continued to abuse the hapless writer. The sheriff also made a division of zero with her. At one point, the girl wanted to grab her gun and take them all out, but Johnny noticed this and tossed the holster aside. After all the men did a division zero with her, Jennifer tried to run away. The sheriff decided to take the girl out, but she jumped off the bridge into the water. The men waited a few minutes, but the body never resurfaced. The sheriff realizes that the girl must be found and orders the underlings to scour the lake for the body. Several hours of trying to find her yields no results. The sheriff then orders the accomplices to destroy all evidence exposing them. After destroying the tape, he sent Johnny and Earl to the girl's home to burn her belongings and then dismantle the car for screws. Following orders, the criminals destroy the evidence and continue to explore the lake, hoping to catch the girl. Meanwhile, Matthew returns the keys and informs them that the writer has moved out. Matthew withdraws from his friends and spends less and less time with them, believing himself responsible for Jennifer's death. A month later, Matthew sees the girl, but believes it is a hallucination. Late one night, Earl calls the sheriff and informs him that Jennifer's best friend is looking for the writer. The girl has been out of contact and disappeared without a trace a month ago. 
The next morning, Stanley runs to his friends and tells them that the bullying tape is actually still intact, but it went missing during the night. During the night, Johnny is watching TV and hears strange noises. On the porch, the guy finds a dead bird, but does not pay much attention to it. Hearing the noise again, he thinks it's a prank by his friends and threatens with a revolver. Running out onto the porch for the third time, Johnny sees the dead Jennifer's slipper. At that moment, someone stirred in the bushes, and running up there, the boy found the rubber bands. The next day, Sheriff Stort returns home and learns that someone has brought in a videotape. Trying to figure out what is going on, everyone gathers near Johnny's house, and during the dialogue, all suspicions fall on Matthew, who considers himself guilty of Jennifer's death. The sheriff realizes that evidence and witnesses must be destroyed. Storg and Earl go hunting in the woods and the cops offer an old comrade a few drinks. Knowing that Earl has been renting a house to a rider and could expose him, the sheriff takes the old man out as an unnecessary witness. Meanwhile, Jennifer, surviving in the woods for a month, moved into action, trying to get revenge on her abusers. First on her list was Matthew, whom the girl almost drove crazy and then took captive, using the guy's mental retardation. She lured him into a trap and disarmed him with a rope. Stanley and Andy try to find their friend and search the woods. Hearing the familiar harmonica melody, they run to an abandoned house. While one of them is being considered inside, Stanley goes outside and spots Jennifer. The guy shooting Division Zero with the girl decides to pounce on her, but gets caught in a trap. Andy hears his comrade screaming and rushes to his aid, but falls into Jennifer's trap. She beats him on the head with a baseball bat and then stuns the second criminal, who broke his leg. The girl ties him to a tree, clearly fixing his head. First, Jennifer makes him eat a rat so that he realizes what it means to survive in the woods. Stanley likes to peek, so the girl fixes his eyelids with fishing books and ties fishing line to nails. Continuing the abuse, Jennifer strips the fish and coats the guy's face with fish. A few minutes later, crows flew in at the smell and removed Stanley's eyes, after which the guy cleaned himself up. Upon returning to the abandoned house, Jennifer hadn't forgotten about Andy hanging from a rope. At first, she had just tried to drown the guy, but thought it was too easy. Jennifer added caustic lye to the bathtub, forcing Andy to hold on at the expense of good physical fitness. Soon, fatigue went out and the guy fell face first into the water, cleaning himself up in a way that wasn't pleasant. Next on the list was Johnny, whom Jennifer found at a gas station. On the sly, she got close to the guy and knocked him out with a tire iron. Upon waking up, Johnny realized he was tied up and couldn't move. Jennifer treats his teeth and sees him wet himself. She then plays with his mouth with the muzzle of a gun, forcing the guy to breathe through his nose. Johnny does not apologize for his act and continues to insult the girl, threatening her with violence. Jennifer realizes that there is no way to rein him in and disinfects the guy by cutting off his cutlery with a gardening device. Due to the large loss of red fluid and the shock he has experienced, Johnny also gets cleaned up. After introducing herself as a new teacher, Jennifer came to the sheriff's house and met his daughter. The wife called Tog and informed him that the girl wanted to communicate with him. Realizing that the family was in danger, Tog rushed home but did not find his daughter at home. Jennifer and the girl have gone to the park for a walk. The sheriff drives to the park and tries to find the daughter, but to no avail. When he gets back to his car, it turns out that Jennifer is already sitting behind him with a bat to stun him. A while later, the sheriff comes to his senses and tries to apologize to the girl for what he has done. Jennifer doesn't listen to apologies and excuses, as she also asked him not to do anything to her. The girl works on the captive man and gives him a generous shotgun treat. A few minutes later, she realizes it's time to put a fat end to it and leaves the shotgun in the sheriff's backyard. The girl chains the trigger of the shotgun with a rope and ties the other end to Matthew sitting across from her. The mentally challenged boy is unconscious, and Jennifer asks him not to be disturbed, as any sudden movement would be fatal. The sheriff calls out to Matthew, and the awake guy gets up from his seat to help the cop. At that moment, the two of them are taken out by a single shotgun blast. 